we don't even go to church like we used to. And uh, the church of old, uh, we stayed in church all the time, all the time. And we weren't so concerned about the time clock. But now we're a modern church and people are so uh, putting God on a time schedule. And uh, I'm afraid that we are losing, losing our uh, strength when we do that. We, we minimize and we, we alter we work. We try to fit God into our schedule and let, instead of putting God ahead of our schedule, making him our schedule. Amen. So uh, come on back to church. Come on in. Encourage your brothers. Encourage your sisters. Come on into God's house. Amen. I want to uh, pray for those that are sick and shut in. Uh, continue to pray for our seniors, our mothers, and our fathers, and those that are sick and shut in. I dare not call names tonight because I don't want to forget anyone and make anybody feel uh, that I did it on purpose. So I want to continue to call somebody, pray for them, pray with them. And certainly, if you want to uh, join the prayer line on tomorrow at 7 o'clock with Elder Washington and Evangelist Washington, will be uh, praying for you. Call in your prayer request. Make your request known. Make your petition known unto God. All right. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kind favor. Another day that we've never seen before. Another opportunity that you allowed us to stand before your people, to stand before your people, to bring a word of encouragement. God, I ask you right now to help those that are sick right now. Oh, God, someone is body is racking with pain. God, would you heal them tonight? Would you take away the pain, God? Hallelujah. We rebuke every evil force against their body. Wherever they are, wherever they may be, hospital, the emergency room, convalescent home, even at home by themselves, God, I ask you right now to work a miracle as you only you can. Heal right now. Heal by your stripes. Set free, God. Save souls, our lost loved ones. Give them a mind to be saved. Give them a mind to turn around and before it's ever too late. And we thank you for it right now. Certainly, we don't want to forget those that's incarcerated. They may be bound naturally, but they certainly don't have to be bound physically, spiritually. And we ask you right now to God to walk in that room wherever they are, that cell right where they are. Touch them with the hands of mercy. Let them feel your presence, and we thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Bless your word, and we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear nobody. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. God is a good God. I want to talk a few moments about uh, a subject matter that the Lord has given me. A couple of weeks ago, I started it somewhat on a Sunday uh, uh, and, and, and I didn't really finish it, and I'm not sure if I'll finish it tonight, but I want to talk about uh, your soul, your soul, your soul matters, the value of your soul. Uh, we have a lot of movements that's going on right now, and certainly black lives matter, all lives matter, everybody matter. But tonight I want to put some special emphasis on the value of your soul. Your soul matters. Your soul is important. Who is your soul? That's you, the one that God created in his image and in his likeness. So think about your soul. Think about where you will spend eternity. Your soul, this life after this life. Sometimes people don't realize it. Some people don't. They say there's no life after this. Once you're dead, that's it. It's gone. You're gone. But I, uh, whether you believe it or not, whether you believe it or not, uh, uh, you're going to get back up from that grave. So your soul matters. And there's so many scriptures that I can uh, dive into. But I want to uh, uh, do a starting point. Go to Genesis. Uh, Genesis, the second chapter. We'll read a few verses. Genesis, the second chapter, uh, the second chapter, and we will look. I won't read that entire uh, portion, but I want to get a pull maybe from the fourth verse to the seventh. Genesis, second chapter, second chapter, 
fourth verse. You have it? All right, let's read. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. And when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and heavens, every plant of the field before it was in earth, in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had caused it not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. You see it? Sixth verse. But there went up a mist from the earth, and the water, and watered the whole face of the ground. Here's where we're going to pull our text from, topic from. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. God breathed his breath of life into the dust of the ground. So we're re really... You think you're something. You think you, what you see behind these pieces of cloth is, in essence, is nothing but dirt, dust from the ground. God breathed into our bodies, and we were made, we were brought to life. Do you know the body without life or breath is just an empty shell? And without that, God, God, without his breath or his life, we're removed from the essence of this life. We, God has given us life. Therefore, our life and our worth comes from God, the spirit of God. Many may boast on who they are and how powerful they are on this earth, but I, my friends and my brothers and my sisters, you are nothing without the breath of life that God breathed, in into, breathed into us. So tonight I want to talk about a couple of things. I can go so many di di different directions in this, but I want to talk about your inner man, your inner life, and your life after life. Your soul, your soul, your soul is important. Your soul is important. And, and to give you a little background, do you know the makeup of man is composed or composed, his composition of man is the body, soul, and spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. Man was created, we were created to fellowship and to commune with God. Yes, he breathed into us the breath of life. He's given us life. Uh, the physical life, life, and not only that, the physical life that he's given us. I was thinking about this. He could have made us serve him. He could have made us worship him. But God given us, not only did he give us life, he gave us a choice. Choose thee this day who you will serve. Who you will serve. Why is that so important? Because the life that you live now, the life that I live now, will determine the life that I live the, in the, when he comes back. <laughs> Isn't that something? I was thinking about this. When, when, when a man dies, when we die on this earth, we go back to the ground. We both go back to where we come from before he breathed life into us. Hear me now. Hear me now. So, he don't send us to hell and he don't send us to heaven. We make a dis we have to make a conscious decision on the direction that we want to go. We have to make a de conscious decision on what's more important to you. God knows my life is important in the physical, but my life is so important in the eternal, where would you spend eternity? Where would your soul spend eternity? So the inner man, the physical man, the physical makeup of man 
is the decisions that you and I make right now. Soul can be distinct, uh, can be distinguished or dis, uh, distinguished in two meanings: the inner soul, which is the the, the inner you, the real you, uh, 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 your your thoughts, your mind, and the physical body, the physical life. That's why we right now, we're trying to protect the physical life by, by wearing a mask, taking the vaccine, washing our hands, social distancing. What are you doing? You're trying to protect the physical man. But what are you doing to protect the spiritual life? What are you doing to protect your inner soul, the man that's really on the inside? Wow. Think about that. Think about that. Look at what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians. Uh, 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, I believe. I, I, I had so many thoughts that was running in my mind, and I was asking God, Lord, help me to kind of stay focused and so I can uh, 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 convey what, you, what you're saying to us. And... Uh, I get so excited when I think about these things. But look at what Paul said in the fifth chapter of First Thessalonians, uh, beginning. Let's look at the uh, look at what, what what Paul was telling us. Paul in his expression here. Look at the twenty second verse. He said, uh, uh, "Abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Holy. That's the whole man." Holy, and I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved, blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at what he said in the 24th verse. Faithful is he that called you, who also will do it. Faithful to do what? He will preserve you. He will preserve you. He will preserve your body, soul, and your spirit. Your, your, the, the spirit is, is the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. You have to allow in spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Ghost to come in. And uh, my brothers and my sisters, if you don't have his spirit in your life, you're living beneath your privilege. You're living without the power of God. You need that power to help, uh, help you in your, your body, help you in your, your, your spirit, and help your soul. My soul need to be saved. Amen. So he said, he said, faithful is he that called you who, will also, who also will do it. Paul said, brethren, pray for us. In other words, we need prayer in fact, uh, one writer said we need to pray without ceasing. Pray. Refrain from doing things. We got to make some adjustments. We got to, we got to, we have a choice to make. We have a choice to make. You and I all have a choice to make. We can do right or wrong. And, and, and what you do now on this earth will determine where your soul will spend eternity. Don't know about you, but you got to make, I made up in my mind, for God I'm going to live, for God I'm going to die, and, and, and I'm going to serve him with all I have. Why? Because my soul is important. Think about your soul. Think about your soul. Think about what's important. Yes, retirement is nice. Uh, 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 benefits is nice. A good job is nice. And to obtain some things on this earth but why are we putting so much more in these things that's going to be corrupt or going to deteriorate? It's going to rust away, but our soul will live forever. Your soul, when you die, you go back, your soul, your body goes to the ground, but then God's going to call that body back up out of the ground, and you're going to have to answer to the choices that your soul made in this life. So think about that. My soul is valuable. My soul is important. Why? Why? Because he's going to judge every man according to his own works. Go to Mark. 
Look at Mark, the eighth chapter. This is where Jesus, uh, before he was, he was predicting his death, he was telling his, the people and the disciples, uh, the first time he was telling, he said, listen, I'm going, uh, uh, he, he began to teach them and tell them the Son of Man will suffer some things and uh, be rejected. I'm going to be rejected of the elders, and I'm going to be rejected of the chief priests, the scribes, and I will be killed. And, uh, but the third day, Jesus said, I'm going to rise again. He spake these things openly. And Peter took, it, took him and, and began to rebuke Jesus, rebuke him. Because, and then that's when, you're, you, you know, we're in that 33rd verse of that 8th chapter, and Jesus, Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, and he rebuked Peter, saying, get thee behind me. In other words, I'm on assignment. I'm on assignment for my father. Satan, for thou hast lost my place. For thou hast savest not the things that be of God, but the things of, that be of man. 34th verse, 8th chapter of Mark. Follow me if you would. And when he had called the people unto him, his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever shall come after me, let him do what? Deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. 35th verse, Jesus is talking here. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels shall be, shall save it. I like this, and we like this. This is a, 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 a highlight of this text. Jesus asked this question. What does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? That's a question. We're going after all of these material things. We're going after all of these things to sustain us and to, to gratify, to gratify the flesh, to, 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 to look good here on this earth. And we're leaving God out. We're not taking care of our soul. Our soul is on the back burner. Our life is on the back burner. You can take care of this body. You can exercise. You can, and you should eat right and all of these things. But then what are you doing for your soul? How am I treating? Am I, am I, am I growing? Am I getting healthy in my natural body? And my soul is starving for the living word of God? The danger that we've been faced with this last year and a half is not only this COVID virus, but people's soul is starving because we have lost that desire. The enemy has come in and tricked the minds of people. They no longer have, they don't want to go to church no more. They want to make God fit in their program. What is important? My soul is important. What is important? Be honest with yourself. Since this pandemic, we should be drawing closer to God. And if, you, if you've been going in the opposite direction, listen, man, think about your soul. Listen, what is it? What, what if I'm going to go after all of these things, go after and try to achieve all of these things, and my soul is starving, hungry for the living word? Do you know your soul? Sometimes people are trying to figure out why am I so antsy? Why am I so upset? Why am I going through this? Why, 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 why? Sit down and think about your soul. God is trying to get your attention. Your soul is more important. We're putting everything else ahead of him. We got to learn how to seek him first. And all, everything, seek, ye, seek the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and everything else is going to be added to you. Why am I going to seek his kingdom? Because my soul is important. I want my soul to be saved. I want my soul to be ready when he say, come by people. Don't go after. Some people are going after titles. They're going after uh, fame. They're going after this and all of this. But listen, your soul is more important. Even me. A title. Your titles. Some people are stuck on titles and all that kind of stuff. But when he say, come my people, he ain't going to come and say, come Pastor John. 
He ain't going to, he's going to say, come my people. And there have to be a connection to the soul. When he say, come my people, if you've been connected to God, it magnetized. I'm going to be, you'll be ready to stand before God. I said this, I said this, and you can look at it this way. When they put you back in the ground, you die. Your life is over here. Put that tombstone on you. I don't care how heavy it is. But when he say, come, my people, we're going to get up out of that ground. We're coming back up out of that ground and be changed. Listen at this. I like a lot of people like, oh, we're going to be changed from this mortal to immortality. That's going to happen. But then that's going to also happen for those that's going in the opposite direction. We're going to be changed to go back with Jesus. And those that made it the conscious decision to serve the devil going to be changed to go back with him. Did you get that? Transformation is going to take place. You're going to be changed. Your soul is going to have to give an account for the decisions you made here. I don't know about you, but I want to live with him eternity. Not go back with the devil. The enemy. Your body will be changed. Some people say, oh, It'll be all over when, once they get to hell. No, no, you will live in eternal hell. There's going to be gnashing of teeth. There's going to be, people going to be trying to kill themselves. They're going to run to the mountain. The mountain, mountain going to say, no, ain't no hiding place here. Your soul, your life then will suffer forever. We don't like to talk about that. Oh, Pastor John, you're talking all this stuff. But listen, that's the important. That's, that's <laughs> whether you like it or not, it's the truth. That's the truth, right or wrong, heaven or hell. Where would my soul spend eternity? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And do you know what? People are selling all out their soul to gain this world. People are conniving. People are lying. People are stealing. People are, are, are infiltrating our people uh, uh, with, with, with substance so they can gain financially. Where would your soul spend eternity? Another thing that you want to think, keep in mind, for those of us that stand before you, we need to take our job serious. And not just, I'm not in this position. I'm not trying to gain. I'm not trying to, I don't want to be a pastor just to drive a nice car uh, or, or live in a span, fancy house. I do that. I still work. That's why I do those things. I know God will bless me, but I know that's not my main purpose. My main purpose is how can I get someone to change their life? How can I warn you? How can I tell you about the value of your soul? When you close your eyes for the last time, you got to open your eyes up to a living God. Got to answer to him. So think about your soul. Where would I spend eternity? Yes, you're going to be changed. All of us going to be changed. Moment in the twinkling of an eye, but then when we stand before Him, the choice that God has given us now. Who who will you serve? Choose thee this day. That's it. Who you will serve? Choose them this day. So we have so many. We have something to think about. My soul, my soul is important. Where would I spend my eternity? You know, uh, that there's a destiny for our life, and God has planned. A, 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 he said in his word, I would that, that I, I, w I don't want any to perish. I don't want you to perish. I don't want you to lose your soul. I don't want you to die and go to hell. I'm giving you an opportunity. Every time you get up in the morning, every time your feet hit the floor, God's giving you another opportunity to make the right, to right the wrong. So God has charted a plan for us, and we got to keep this in mind. Our soul is important. Think about your soul. Think about your life after life. True enough, we got to make the right decisions right now. And how can I make the, so you say, oh, well, listen, I'm in this world, but we're not of the world, but then God give us the spirit of God to help us, to lead us, to guide us, to help us in this natural body in this physical body, to help us to make the right decision. Will I make mistakes? Sure you will.
But then that's when you have to ask the Spirit of God to help you, to forgive you. And that means not only if I may make a mistake in sin, but I don't have to, I don't have to, sin won't take a foothold in my life. I won't have to dwell in sin. Your spirit will feel uncomfortable. Your spirit, man, will reject it. It will repel it. You say, oh, man, that wasn't right. Even, even down to your thoughts. You know, that's another thing about uh, our soul uh, that people won't see what's going on in your mind. They don't see uh, what, what the enemy is fighting you with. But then you have to make sure I'm making, uh, I'm making every effort to, to, to have the right mind, to have the right thoughts. In fact, I like the way David said that. Y'all know it's very familiar. Uh, David said, I like what he said. He said uh, uh, in, in, in Psalms 51, I like what he said. He said, uh, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew within me the right spirit. I like that. That means the right spirit, something that nobody else can see until it acts out. But the right spirit, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. God, I don't want to live without you. I got to have your Holy Spirit because my soul is important. What's going to preserve your soul? The Holy Spirit. Restore to me. Now, this is for, and this is after David made some mistakes. He made, he messed up. Y'all know the life of David. That, that, that was a crazy man. He did some stuff, some, some outlandish stuff. Stuff that you would never thought. But then he, he had to come to the, the, the conclusion to say, listen, God, restore unto me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Blot out my iniquities. Blot out my sins. That's a prayer we all need to be praying. Create in me a clean heart. Renew within me the right spirit. Where would your soul Spend eternity. Think about that, my friend, my brothers, and my sisters. This is not a time for us to point fingers at someone else. It's time to take inventory of myself, my soul. Where would I spend eternity? Do you know tomorrow? I take that back a lot. Take it to the rest of the day is not promised to us. The Bible says, the day you hear my voice, heart not your heart. In other words, take an account for your soul. Where would my soul spend eternity? Where would I die when I close? Where would I go when I close my eyes for the last time? You have a choice now. We have a choice to make right now. Right now. Your soul matters. The value of your soul. So think about this. When the enemy fights us, when the enemy, the enemy fights us, the but the, and then you have the spirit of the Lord. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. The weapon of the enemy, the weapon will fight you. The enemy will fight you to try to help, to try to steal your soul. He's trying to take away. He don't want you. He, he wants he want you to serve him. He comes. The enemy's re resume. Here's, it, here's this when I be, before I close. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The devil will do anything to kill, steal, and destroy. He will give you filthy money. He will give you bling bling. He will give you this, that, and the other. But his whole, whole objective is to kill, steal, and destroy. And that's including your soul. He want to take away your soul. But Jesus said, I like what Jesus said, I come that you may have life, life for your soul, life for your soul on this earth, and life for your soul when I come back to take you with me. Eternal life, everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Think about your soul, my brother and my sister. Don't take your soul for granted. Don't take your soul for granted. And when that spirit is talking to you, hear that still, small voice. The tears of repentance is coming to you. Why? Because your soul is crying out for the living God. Help, help, don't do it. Come on now, don't make that decision. Come on, get it right before it's too late. You and I don't never know. We never know. Tomorrow is not promised to us. We don't know when our end is. But one thing we have to know for sure 
our soul is in, important. Love not the world, neither the things that's in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. The pride of life. And it, it is not of the Father's will that any should perish. And the world shall pass away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of his Father will abide with him forever. My brothers and my sisters, make up in your mind that I'm going to abide with him. I want to make my, I'm, I'm going to make my calling and election sure. I want to, my, I, my value, my soul. Uh, I listen, I can do certain things, but listen, if it's going to affect my soul, if it's going to uh, take away from my, my eternal life, I can't do it. I can't do it. So think about your soul. Think about your soul. Tonight when you lay your head down, whenever you get some quiet moments, some quiet time, Think about how can I improve my life to live after this life? How can I preserve my soul? Make sure that should be the number one objective, and that is my soul. Amen. God bless you. Pray that you think about that. I pray I said something that will uh, enter in your hear, in your ears, and not only just be a hearer, but be a doer of God's word. Your soul is valuable. Your soul is more valuable than anything on this earth. Your soul is valuable than anything that you can imagine. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Somebody say everlasting life. Woo-wee. Everlast when I see Jesus, I'm going to say amen. Everlasting life. God bless you. Bow your heads. I'm going to pray for us. Pray for you. Pray for me because the enemy is after us. The enemy is wanting to destroy us. He, he's, he's going around like a roaring lion, sinking who he may devour. He's trying to destroy our soul. But listen, we're going we gonna to pray tonight. God's going to preserve us. God's going to keep you. He'll keep you. He'll keep you if you keep your mind stayed on him. Father, I thank you right now for your goodness and your word in this few moments that I had to share with my brothers and my sisters. I pray, God, that we, 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 we take this word to heart to know that our soul, my soul is more important than anything. Oh, God, oh, God, help me right now. Help us right now, God, to fight off the evils of this world. Help us to do what's right in your sight. And so when you, when you say, come, my people, our soul will be ready. And all we want to do is hear your voice say, well done, well done, well done, thy true, good, and faithful servant. And I thank you for it. Strengthen my brother. Strengthen my sister. Help them right now, God. Preserve them, Lord God. Keep them, Lord God. And as only you can, preserve them, Lord God. Heal them. They shall be healed. Save them. They shall be saved. You save them, and I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you. Your soul is important. Value your soul. God bless you. Thank you.